Hi, my name is Dieter Ruth, and I'll be talking about my work in the Julia Garbage Collector. To start my presentation with a brief description of how Julia objects are traced, in the case of a single thread you see, and compile this recording in a set to ensure that the reds are in a state where they can be safely scanned whenever GC is about to run. Then I'll go over some uh, of the dynamic load balancing techniques that we use it to parallelize tracing blood jewelry objects. Uh, here will be some of the preliminary benchmark results, and also talk about some of the work that could be done in the GC. GC parameters from the Julia application start with safe ones, which are basically uh, the way that we have to ensure that threads are in the state where the references from them can be safely traced by the GC. Uh, safe points are implemented in the compiler through the insertion of very small snippets of code, which read from a memory location from which a uh, dual task of remove the dependency from. The very beginning of collection is a memory location that's scripted uh, in a way to signal to other tasks that GC is about to start, and all uh, the dual tasks that subsequently read from that location are going to incur a segmentation flow going to be trapped by the signal handler and they were going to be dispatched to the reading region so that uh, one thread uh, is going to proceed with the collection while all the threads are halted. And this memory location gets interrupted in the end of the GC and the dual test uh, threads proceed with the execution of their ordinary tasks. For tracing, we need to have a certain set of objects as far as coming from. And that's called the root set, which may contain, for example, uh, local variables and thread sets. The root set is initially in here in the stack data structure maintained by each one of the workers. And tracing proceeds by first uh, popping one item on the stack and pushing it to the references. And we repeat this process of popping one item and pushing on the references until we traverse all parts of a rich but parts of the object graph so that in which all regions, uh, memory regions should end up can be safely deallocated at the end. For parallel marking, we modify the safe point mechanism so that uh, the threads that read from that group to memory location and they were trapped by the signal handler, they no longer go to a written region, but rather they partake in parallel marking. And again, the threads are proceeded with the execution of the ordinary trigger tests in the end for parallel tracing, each worker is going to maintain for its own stack uh, the structure of items for all the scan by the GC. The root set is going to be initially into, into the stack one of the workers. And the difference here is that the second worker, which has no items in its queue, is going to claim one item for uh, the queue of the first one. And this process of uh, dynamically claiming both items whenever the uh, threads have nothing in your stack with the structures. It's called work ceiling, and it's basically what we implemented to parallelize the GC. So tracing now happens in parallel, and again, the memory regions uh, show in red or in which will when they are deallocated in the end. We already see parallel speed up for uh, some of the benchmarks that we're running. In particular, have these uh, three mutable and three immutable benchmarks. Uh, they illustrate a certain kind of uh, allocation pattern in which one uh, the structure is initially allocated and kept in the background while the smaller data structures, in this case binary trees, are recruitably uh, allocated in parallel uh, and become garbage right away. This stresses uh, certain aspects of the generation as you see, and also stresses a kind of, uh, kind of data structure that we would uh, have in practice. And this ensemble cell benchmark is basically a parallelized differential equation solver and the kind of the bridges from the true mutable and true mutable benchmark in the, in the kind of hip shape that we have. So we have a much uh, flatter uh, hip shape rather than the deep and counter heavy uh, data structure, as in the case of binary trees. And mark time by itself uh, can be kind of uh, perhaps not so uh, realistic metric and uh, artificial metric if taken by itself. And the these reductions in mark time, they also translate into reductions of GC time, which are more modest because of the second stage of GC called sweeping, in which we uh, free up the unreachable memory locations 
uh, still happens here. And again, these corresponding uh, reductions in GCSI also translate into reductions of runtime. And the question uh, yeah, one may have is whether there could be uh, bad cases for parallel marking or cases in which uh, could be parallel marking could actually perform worse than a sequential GC. And the answer is unfortunately yes. And uh, for example, uh, data structures like linked lists are kind of an adversarial example because they expose very little parallelism. And parallelism could be measured by uh, a similar metric as uh, to work span ratio from test scheduling. And in this case, we still must pay all the synchronization overhead from the parallel GC, which can come, for example, from atomic stores and loads, and also from atomic flood fences uh, for the matter. So this is one uh, case in which parallel marking can actually perform worse. Uh, also for future work, I think that uh, one thing that we could do because uh, of all the synchronization overheads that I mentioned previously is to have better heuristics to decide when to actually use parallel marking. So the GC in Julia is generational in the sense that it segregates the heap into regions of uh, old and uh, young objects. And there are some collections, they are trace a very small fraction of the heap, mainly consisting of uh, young objects. So uh, this raises the question of whether we should actually be using parallel marking for the small collections, or rather, we could have a less synchronization of the head with the sequential GC and have better performance. And the uh, second thing that uh, could be done in the GC could be to uh, improve cache performance. In particular, uh, there are plenty of papers in the literature uh, mentioning how software prefetching in marking can improve cache performance, which could in turn only translate into reduction of runtime. So this could be something uh, worth trying as well. Uh, these are uh, the GC benchmarks. Uh, this is the repository from which I've taken uh, the three benchmarks that I, uh, that I mentioned, and also the measurement structure. And this uh, second paper illustrates, uh, uh, briefly discusses why the interests are an adversary example for parallel marking. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the talk and thank you.